SpaceX and Blue Origin. It was a fierce battle, but not in the way you might think. While SpaceX outpaces Jeff Bezos' company in the space race, the real clash is unfolding in the legal arena, a field where Blue Origin has made quite a name for itself. Previously, we discussed Blue Origin's scoping commentary, which raised numerous issues with the draft EIS, or Environmental Impact Statement, and proposed significant limitations on future Starship operations. In response, SpaceX founder Elon Musk has also been vocal, offering his own set of reactions and counter-arguments. Stay tuned to see how this legal showdown evolves and what it means for the future of space exploration. Musk didn't hold back, posting a succinct tweet, Sue Origin, a playful jab at Blue Origin's tendency to resort to legal action. He elaborated further, explaining, in past years, Blue Origin also sued to stop SpaceX from using what is now our primary launch pad at 39A, and tried to patent landing a rocket on a ship, even though that idea had been around for 70 years. Musk concluded that Blue Origin's commentary is an obviously disingenuous response. Not cool of them to try, for the third time, to impede SpaceX's progress by lawfare. Get it? Because it's warfare, but by law. Blue Origin's actions clearly aim to slow SpaceX's advancements, making it easier for them to catch up. A fantastic comment on our channel summed it up perfectly. Winners do, losers sue. Do you agree with this sentiment? Please leave a heart icon in the comment section below if you do. Indeed, SpaceX needs to continue pushing forward to reach new milestones and solidify their role in the aerospace industry. Why, just yesterday, they took another significant step to prove that point. Following the successes of Falcon 9 and Starship, another powerhouse in SpaceX's orbital fleet, Falcon Heavy has reawakened after a half year of dormancy. At 526 EDT on June 26th, Falcon Heavy lifted off from the LC-39A launch pad at Kennedy Space Center carrying the GOESU weather satellite into geostationary orbit. The launch happened just 10 minutes after the directors deemed the weather favorable. After leaving the launch pad, Falcon Heavy soared into space. At around T plus 2 minutes 30 seconds, the two side boosters B-1072 and 1086 separated from the rocket to return. At around T plus 8 minutes 8 seconds and T plus 8 minutes 11 seconds, the two boosters touched down on landing zone 1 and 2 respectively, marking a new landing milestone. Musk then tweeted, Falcon Heavy side boosters land in Cape Canaveral, Florida. Meanwhile, core booster B-1087 continued on its way to the targeted geostationary transfer orbit, where it performed an additional burn to reach its final orbit. By approximately T plus 4 hours, 30 minutes, and 11 seconds, the GOES-U satellite was deployed and became operational. After this was completed, SpaceX tweeted, Falcon Heavy's 10th mission launches NOAA's GOES-U weather satellite to a geostationary orbit, confirming that the mission was a success. Musk added, new weather satellite delivered. In terms of payload, GOES-U is the fourth and final satellite in the Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellite, or GOES, R series of satellites built by Lockheed Martin for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. It plays an extremely important role in weather forecasting in the U.S. and surrounding areas. Mentioning this, Ken Graham, director of the National Weather Service, said, The GOES-R series of satellites, it's been a game changer for us. Since the first launch of the series in 2016, the latest series of GOES has enabled new and improved forecasts, warnings, and services to help save lives and protect property. Pam Sullivan, Director of the GOES-R program at NOAA added, The main thing I hear from forecasters is that they have more confidence in a forecast. This once again shows how important this mission is, thereby demonstrating the importance of the Falcon Heavy. In fact, GOES-U is the only satellite in the GOES-R series to be launched by Falcon Heavy, while previous satellites were launched by ULA's Atlas V. This, again, is SpaceX's victory over its competitors. In 2021, NASA awarded a $152.5 million contract to SpaceX to launch this mission after ULA could not continue due to a lack of Atlas V hardware for this mission. In fact, the selection of the GOES-U launcher is an open competition. Rex Engelhart, GOES-U mission manager for NASA's Launch Services program, shared, the different rocket companies join and sign up with the contract and give us 
not to exceed prices. When we're trying to procure a rocket for particular missions, we do a mini competition where we give them an opportunity to lower those prices, come down off the not to exceed, and bid to the mission's specific requirements. In this case, Falcon Heavy won that. In addition, Falcon Heavy is considered the best choice for this mission from a technical perspective. Juliana Scheiman, director of NASA Science Missions at SpaceX, once commented that Falcon Heavy's advantage is its additional performance, or Delta V, which stands for change in velocity, which helps bring the satellite to its geostationary orbit. The GOES-U mission requirement is no higher than 987 meters per second. Meanwhile, Falcon Heavy can put GOES-U into a transition orbit with a delta V of 566 meters per second, meaning it will help the spacecraft save more fuel to fly to the planned location. This will help prolong the operating life of GOES-U. Sullivan said GOES-U is designed to operate for 15 years, but with Falcon Heavy's capabilities, they expect the satellite will have enough fuel for 20 years of operation. Back to Falcon Heavy's current progress, GOES-U is a mission that marks an important milestone for Falcon Heavy. This is the 10th mission of this rocket so far, since its first launch in 2018. Although not as many launches as Falcon 9, all 10 missions of Falcon Heavy are very impressive. For me, I still love the launch mission of the Tesla Roadster and Starman. What about you? Which mission do you like most? Please, let me know in the comment section down below. The Goes You mission also marks the awakening of Falcon Heavy after half a year of hibernation. While its first half of this year hasn't been as notable as its two siblings, Falcon 9 and Starship, the goes -You mission was originally scheduled for April, but faced a bit of a leak problem with Core Booster B-1087. Thanks to the great effort from the SpaceX team, everything is back to normal. To date, 2023 is considered the most explosive year for Falcon Heavy with five launches. That makes expectations for 2024 even greater, but maybe this year, the number of Falcon Heavy launches will not be as high as last year. However, the upcoming missions are all very impressive. After awakening with the GOES-U mission, Falcon Heavy will aim for two other important missions around the end of the year. The first mission is Europa Clipper, around October, used to launch a spacecraft to survey Jupiter's moon Europa. The second mission is Griffin, around November, to launch NASA and Astrobotics Viper Lunar Lander. This mission is also expected to be the first time SpaceX will successfully land three boosters, marking a further development in their reuse record. It can be said that SpaceX is developing too comprehensively. All of their systems operate smoothly and deserve to be ranked among the highest positions in the rocket industry. Even with just one of these rockets, SpaceX can still lead the current space race. Therefore, please like the video, share it, and subscribe to our channel to continue following and supporting SpaceX. Turning our gaze towards the US's rival in the east, it's impressive to see China's recent achievement with the Chang'e 6 mission. On the morning of May 25th, the Chang'e 6 return capsule successfully re-entered Earth's atmosphere, carrying around 2 kilos of lunar material collected from the Apollo crater on the far side of the moon. The capsule separated from the mission service module about 5,000 kilometers away from Earth and completed its descent, landing in the grasslands of the Xi Wang Banner, Inner Mongolia, at around 2.07 a.m. ETC, June 25th. This mission marks a significant milestone, providing unique lunar material that scientists believe will offer valuable insights into the moon's evolution. Chinese experts have expressed pride in this achievement, highlighting its importance for global scientific research and celebrating it as a significant event for humanity. Chang'e 6 represents China's ambitious lunar exploration program, building upon the successes of Chang'e 4 and Chang'e 5 missions. Looking ahead, China plans to continue with Chang'e 7 and 8 missions in 2026 and 2028, respectively, aiming towards establishing an International Lunar Research Station, or ILRS for short, by 2030 and sending astronauts to the moon in the same time frame. These efforts underscore China's significant strides in lunar exploration and their ambitions to compete globally in space exploration. In this context, SpaceX stands out as a formidable competitor, possibly the only entity capable of challenging China's advancements. 
Supporting SpaceX and fostering its capabilities could play a crucial role in maintaining America's competitive edge in the global space race. It'll be interesting to see how SpaceX responds to these developments and continues to innovate in space exploration. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.